All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the rental markets. Guys, I love wholesaling properties because it allows me to market to find deals, cherry pick the best ones to add to my portfolio of rentals, which brings in over $20,000 a month, Love rental properties. House so easy, we close fast, and any time that works for you, your house don't need. Here's the cool part: the one that I don't want to keep, I just wholesale. I cherry pick the best for myself, and I wholesale the rest. And because of that, I still wholesale four, six, sometimes ten deals every single month. So wholesaling is such a great skill to get started, to learn, to build confidence in this business, right? And it's a great way to create profits to then take to investing. So I want to talk about something just briefly, but wholesaling isn't really investing. At the end of the day. And if you think it is, you're probably wrong. Reason being is, is wholesaling is just another job, right? But it gives us the opportunity to learn so much more about investing while making money. So wholesaling is really more of a marketing business than it is investing. It's, it's a business that we're gonna have to spend time and energy and often money, pay for marketing to make a profit in. So it's typically money and, and or time that we're gonna have to spend. If you don't have a lot of time, then you're gonna have to spend some money. If you don't have any money at all, that's fine. You can still do this business, but you're gonna have to dedicate a lot of time very often and be consistent to be able to have success and to see results in this business. So this is about rentals. Let's talk more about that and get back to that. But rental markets are gonna be markets, like we had mentioned earlier, that I'm gonna be able to get a property at a really good price that's gonna rent for a really good price. Doesn't really make sense for me to go buy a property that's four or $500,000 in cost that's only gonna rent for 2,000 a month. That's not a very good return on my investment. But if I can find a property that rents for, let's say, $1,200 a month that I can buy for $80,000, that's a good return on my investment. And that was the example that I had previously used. So rule of thumb for me, I'm in the Midwest, is I like to see 1% of the purchase price in rent every month. So simple math, if I buy a $100,000 property, I would want that property to rent for at least $1,000 a month. That's called the 1% rule. In some markets, we can actually achieve what's referred to as the 2% rule, which would mean that we could find a property that rents for $1,000 a month that we could buy for $50,000. So you would be getting 2% of the total amount of the value of the property every single month. So typically speaking, the 1% rule will allow you to cash flow on a property as a rental, which typically means that you're going to be able to pay all of your expenses and have some money left over every single month. And if you are at the 2% you'll cash flow quite a bit more. But if you can't reach at least the 1%, being able to cash flow on that property whenever you're using 100% financing or maybe even 80% financing, it's gonna be very difficult to do. So the rental markets are typically gonna have higher rents in relation to the property value. Now, doesn't mean that you can't find a property for 400 grand that rents for 4,000 a month. That's also possible. What matters here is not the value of the property and it's not the rent. It is the correlation between those two things. If you can find a property for 200,000 that rents for 1,800 bucks a month, you're just below that 1%, which would be 2,000, but that still may work. So it's finding that correlation and getting those to get very close and or having the rent even more. So on average in my portfolio, we're at about the 1.2 to 1.3% rule, which is above the 1% rule, which means that all of my properties cash flow two, three, four, some of them even $500 a month. So this is about the actual market. And that means that you're going to want to find the value of property that's going to correlate evenly or even above a little bit with the amount of rent that can be charged in those properties. This is how we find the good rental markets. We find those values of properties that have high rents that equal out and they also correlate very, very closely. Another great way to find rental markets is to go to your local RIA clubs, go to your local Facebook group, groups and meet the other investors and find out where they're investing in rental. Find out where they're having success in their rental properties. And also while you're doing that, you're simultaneously building rapport with these strategic partners, these other investors in your marketplace 
and this is going to allow you to joint venture with these people it's going to allow you to add them to your buyers list so they can become your buyer and maybe you may have other buyers that your friends that you meet at these clubs have or, or have deals that you can connect your buyers to in fact about 30 percent of the deals that we do in our business roughly 30 percent are done with other investors so do not have the scarcity mindset guys i talked a little about this a little bit but i just want to talk about it again don't have that scarcity mindset have the abundance mindset there is plenty of deals out there for everybody in fact we're buying 100 houses a year in our local market you can do this too it's not that hard but again back to the rental markets guys these are proper Property values that are going to correlate healthily, I think that's a word, healthily, healthy, either way, to the amount of rent that you're going to be able to charge on these properties. That's going to be the best place to find the rentals and to find the markets in which people are investing in rental properties. Get your cash, just come and get it. You ain't get cash from your tenants. The back taxes was ridiculous. Dilapidated, we'll fix it.